What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, No Miss J, man. Coming at y'all real quick. Just want to talk to y'all, man, about this past draft we had this weekend, man. Uh, I got to say, I am so hyped and so down at the same time about the draft because it was so good, man. But the problem is this draft class is one of those classes that if, if you don't already have a lot of talent on your team, oh, it's going to be so hard for you as a, as a team as a whole, man, because... One thing, I, when I compare this team right now with these guys added to the other rosters, a lot of other teams have more talent and more playoff experience than our team coming into free agency this year. So, really, I feel like the Lions in free agency somewhat, they improved, but they somewhat reset it at the same time. So, I feel like we're still a step behind. And I think that's the reason why, no matter how long the Lions draft, usually, why we always feel like our roster still doesn't compare to other teams because... To me, we don't have enough strong enough nucleus to begin with. Like, we have Matthew Stafford. And you may have a couple receivers, a nice solid running back or something, and maybe a player here and there on defense. That's about it. Uh, other teams already have a structure on there. They have a decent top 15 line on the offense or a top 15 D line, something that they can build and continue to build with. Or, you know what I'm saying, a scheme that makes sense. They already had those in play, and it's been proven to somewhat work. We don't all. We never really been at that point, so it's kind of like, you know, it's all like we always start from the ground up, and which it seems like we always a step behind, no matter how well our draft class may say we is two steps ahead. Because when you look at teams like Baltimore, man, <laughs> good lord, and I, now I can't sleep on no team in the North right now. I know. The draft wise, they don't look like they had the most stellar draft, but those teams had more talent than we did last year. If you think about it, you know that's why they were able to do more, be more successful. Even the Bears, you know, what I'm saying that defense is still loaded last year. We don't know how well the offense is going to be, but they did get tight ends. We don't, you know, I'm not even sure if Nick Foles is going to be a backup this year. We, I'm not even personally sure about that. He might be. But even then, he could end up helping Mitchell get his stuff together as a passer. So you never know. Uh, you know, then they added a lot of defensive talent in this draft. And they had a weird draft, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they passed or they had a good draft, but just because their moves don't look as solid as ours, it don't mean they weren't as effective. You know what I'm saying? We do have to take that into effect. You know what I'm saying? I can't give them a full grade that's meaningful until I see the product play. You know, that I think that's the fairest thing I could say. On paper, I think we had a phenomenal draft, personally, better than I even give us credit for. But, you know, for the sake of keeping things down and fair, I always put them at a B plus and A minus zone. Uh, everybody, some of the things people are complaining about, though, right now, is killing me with this whole Everson Griffin scenario. Dude, we haven't even, we have already got getting paid $90 million. You're asking Everson Griffin to come in and be a guy who's going to play behind Trey Flowers. Okay, if we manage to get him on a decent deal to do that, hey, I ain't mad. But you you put him on a level defensive line that already has a lot of edge rushers. The problem is, is that we didn't have enough guys to rotate in the middle towards the outside of the D-tackle position. We needed guys who can play in rotation. It wasn't a 4-3 defensive end. It wasn't, that wasn't the problem for me. It was the fact that we didn't have any 3-4 defensive ends and, you know, no enough strength to rotate properly with snatch last year. So now you got guys, to me, who can do it. Everybody's healthy around this time. Give the defense time to play together. They never even started off the season healthy. And, you know what I'm saying, and that's why, you know, when it comes to Jared Davis, I just really want the Lions to pick up his fifth-year option because I know he isn't really playing – at an extremely high level, but he's one of the only few reliable linebackers that we know we what we're going to get out of. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's the main one we, that we know we're going to get out of. You can't just give up on him. That, and that would be setting us back. Getting rid of him, not bringing him back, or trading him like some of y'all were saying this year would set the Lions back low-key because you, you, you struggle to groom linebackers in the past, and now you're going to trade one of the better ones you have we don't have a, a true legitimate replacement. Like you don't know what's gonna happen with Jalen Tavai. He needs help. He's still he's heading into his second year. He could should only get better. That remains to be seen. You don't know exactly what you go get out of Jamie Collins. You just assume it, just because he knows the defense and his history and how well of a player he is. You know the money you spend on him. 
And then you got Jared Davis. After you get past them three, who else do you really have? You got a bunch of question marks. And to me, that's not a good enough reason to get rid of Jared Davis. That's why I'm glad I say we need to keep him. So, you know, and this is the thing. That's what I'm saying. Why we're always feeling like we're a step back because we get rid of talent, assuming that this is going to be better getting rid of them before we even find a true replacement to even say we can get rid of the guy and say we're going to improve as a defense. So, you know, a lot of people had issues that was too heavy of an offensive draft. I say shut up (laughs) because you need the talent there to help you win offensively through the regular season so defense can be healthy and win championships through defense, win playoff games through defense. You make the playoffs probably because of a combination of offense and defense. You need to get staff for the weapons you need it, and I think Bob Quinn has delivered. Uh, was when you add guys who are playmakers, man, you didn't just get nice weapons. You got playmakers, guys like Swift and Cephas, man, playmakers, man. And that's that's why I'm just feeling good. And you now you can understand at the same time why I do feel on the negative end. I just can't wait to see what we get out of them. You know what I'm saying? This they, they, every draft seems to complement the last one pretty well. If you go all the way back to just 2018. All three of these drafts complement each other so well, man. It's kind of hard not to see the design. You know what I'm saying? This arguably might have been a better... When you go to free agency, this arguably might have been a better free agency than last year. Because I feel like the defensive talent that we got, we got guys who can plug in and come in and play immediately. And you know what... you I ain't going to say know what their role is necessarily, but you know what they're there to do. They're there to play safety. They're there to rotate in the defensive line. They're there to stop the run. They're there to be uh, a leader and a coach at the same time in the linebacker core and help put us to the right direction And while these young boys are going. They, everything has an identity. That's why I say this draft really complements this free agency so well. It's really good. So y'all leave in the comment section, man, how y'all feel about it. Like I said, I give this draft a solid B plus to A minus. If you disagree, tell me why you disagree. Legitimate reason that makes sense and be respectful. And if you agree, tell me why you agree. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to everybody, man. You know, uh, I'm going to come at y'all with some more content and stuff. we got a lot of stories to talk about that we don't realize. So, so please hit the chance to get the uh, chance to hit the subscribe button. Down there, sub up to your boy, sub up to the DSA members. They'll be in the description and to the outsiders as well and everybody in DV. It's your boy, Nomas J, man. I'm heading out. Peace.